So five years ago, just after we got the shop built, we thought it would be a good idea to get a big rain cistern. Now, originally, we had bought it from a company that was going to bring the tank and install it. But by the time I got the spot for the tank ready, that company was starting to go out of business. Now, we did end up getting our money back, but we didn't get a tank installed. So then my spot has sat for the last five years waiting for a tank. And we've, we've finally gotten around to doing it ourselves. So I made a spot for a tank by digging out a, a circle and filling it with gravel and compacting the gravel and then laying a sheet of pressure treated three quarter inch plywood on top of the gravel. And where the water from the shop roof comes out in the yard, I've got kind of a mossy swamp, <laughs> which really needs to be solved. So the reasoning for the tank is both stormwater management, but also to save water to water the garden in the summer. So we had the tank delivered to the house, but it showed up in a big truck out on the street and I had to get it around to the back of the house where the shop is. So we rolled it out of the delivery truck into my truck, which took some convincing of the delivery driver that this was actually going to work, <laughs> but it did. It, it worked perfectly. And we drove the tank around the house to the back. Then we had the problem of getting the tank out of our truck. So what we thought we would do is roll it out onto the grass, onto two air mattresses, and hope for the best. Uh-oh, there it goes. <laughs> hey, see, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't even break the thing. And I actually thought it was going to break the air mattresses, and we'd hear a loud boom or a loud pop. They actually did just fine. And this worked as well as could be expected. And I think the kids enjoyed it. <laughs> and we all rolled it over close to where it's going to go. And it sat next to the shop door for a couple of days. Now, as it had been five years since I built the spot for the tank, there was a lot of stuff in the way. And I had to kind of re find the place that I had made for the tank. So there was some cleaning up to do. And I got the kids to come out and help. <laughs> Basically, we had to clear a path for the tank to move it to where it needed to go and re-clean out the spot that I had for it. And it all seemed to be fine. Now, I'm not a plumber or a rain barrel installer. So th this is the first time I've ever done this and I'm sort of figuring it out as I'm going. This isn't a how-to or this is how you do it. This is more a story of me figuring this out. And I checked for a level and it seemed a little off, but then I decided it was just, just the variation in the plywood. So I got a longer straight edge. And then the level worked pretty well. And some last cleaning up. Then we can get the tank into position. Now what's hard about moving the tank isn't so much the weight. It's about 300 and something, 350 pounds, something like that. So it isn't really heavy. It's more that it, it's hard to hold on to. There's nothing to grab. So to tip it up into the vertical position, I rolled it onto a ladder, then used the ladder to lift the tank up. And the ladder sort of worked as a handle and a lever. We really should have had three people for this, but it worked okay. <laughs> then we could kind of push the tank around. We needed to rotate it to the right position then we could just push it into place at that point. And that worked, <laughs> slowly. And I could put the cap back on. And then it sat for a while again while I figured out how to hook it up. So we also got 
all the parts to hook the tank up to the downspout in the shop. And it's a little more complicated than just a pipe running from the downspout into the tank. Although, in general, that's what it is. But there's a lot of little details that make it a better system than that. I'm glad they gave me a Smarty. And they sent some candy. <laughs> now I just have to figure out what all this stuff is for. So I decided that I would put the inlet and the overflow in the little vertical bit at the top. So I wanted to rotate that closer to the shop. So we would do that first. So my first idea about how to rotate the tank was to tie a rope around the tank and then use the rope to be able to rotate the tank. But this didn't work. The, ro the rope just wouldn't get tight enough and I couldn't rotate it by myself. But I never thought that would have worked. So we got out some hold down straps and these worked a lot better, but I still couldn't rotate the tank by myself. So after thinking about it, what I decided is that we needed to rotate and lift at the same time. And that would help if it was a little more even as to the, 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 the lifting and the rotating. So I got my wife out to help and I had her on one side and me on the other side. And doing it that way, we were just able to lift it and rotate it. And we got it rotated a quarter turn. Now I need to drill some holes in the tank the fittings that they sent didn't work with the attachments that were already on the tank. So I had to make new places for the fittings to go. So on the first hole, which is the drain at the bottom, I drilled a, a test hole and a piece of plywood to make sure it was going to work because I really didn't want to screw the tank up, <laughs> drilling the wrong hole in it. So that's what I'm going to do on the tank. I remember a friend of mine in architecture school saying, the more expensive your piece of paper is, the harder it is to draw the first line on it. And I've, I've always found that to be true. So I, I've got this tank that we've spent some money on and we've, we've spent a lot of time getting it in place. That first hole, that first cut into the tank, I just it took weeks of thinking and figuring and wondering how I should do that but I finally did it, <laughs> and it better be right. Now with this drain hole, there's a rubber hose and a float and an intake mesh that all go on the inside of this hole. So my plan is, is to put a string through the hole from the inside and I can pull that assembly through the hole from the inside. And I tried it at first with a nut attached to a string and tried to kind of swing it through the hole and that, that completely didn't work. So I attached the string to a pipe or basically a rigid stick and this worked much better. I could, I could move the string right over to the hole and put it through and grab the string from the outside. Once I had the string through, I realized I should probably tie it to something. So the one thing that was within reach was my drill. So I tied the string to the drill just to keep it from sliding back through the hole. Now I can put together the assembly that goes on the inside of the tank. So there's a, a bulkhead fitting, which is basically two flanges that sandwich the wall of the tank. Then attached to that is a rubber hose and I can attach that, which took some muscle to get on, but it worked okay. Then at the other end of the hose is a mesh filter and a float that holds the hose up near the surface of the water. Now I tied the other end of the string to this assembly, and I also tied the rope that I'd been using earlier to the other end of the assembly so that just in case the string came off or I had some problem with this, I could still pull this stuff out of the tank. Because once I drop it in the tank, I, I can't reach it. And it would let me sort of lower it in slowly. I was wondering whether, once it was attached to the hole, whether I could get it back up to where I could untie the knot from the rope. But it looked like I could. Now with the string, I had actually thought enough about it that it had to be tied to the end in a way that I could untie it once the little bit of the bulkhead was through the hole. 
because the string had to come off before I could put the bulkhead together. So now the drain to the tank is in place and I can untie my safety rope and drop the assembly into the tank. Now at some point, I suppose I would say phase two, I'm gonna add a pump here. But for now, I'm just gonna add a valve to this so that I can let water out if I need to, but mostly keep the water in. <laughs> now the next part was to put the intake into the tank. So the connection from the downspout to the tank. Now I haven't used hole saws very much, which maybe is obvious. <laughs> I had looked for the handle for this drill and I could not find it. So I was trying to use it without the handle that really would have helped. And I decided after a little bit that this drill had too much power and didn't have a clutch on the chuck. So what I had thought would be the right tool ended up being too much and I went to my cordless drill. That worked a lot better. I could control it better and because of the clutch on the chuck, it sort of had a safety. It wouldn't, it wouldn't just bind up completely. And with some practice, I managed to get this to work. <laughs> There's a rubber gasket that goes in the hole. I started by thinking the mallet would help to get the gasket in place, but it really ended up that you just kind of push it in with your hands, and, and that really works the best. Now the pipe I was trying to get through the gasket was really tight. I think the gasket is set up more for the PVC pipes, which are a little bit smaller on the outside. So I tried some soap mixed with water, and this really helped. Now the other hole I needed to drill was the overflow hole, which also needed a 5-inch hole in the tank. I had gotten much better at this at this point. <laughs> And the second hole went, went much smoother. Side. Now they sent a siphon that goes on the inside of the tank for the overflow. That gets pushed through from the inside. And I just put my soap solution on it to begin with. And it went right through. And I can take apart the old downspout and it was all put together with screws, so it, it just came apart pretty easily. And there's a new leaf catcher thing that I can put in place. So all of the parts that they sent were PVC, but they clearly fit the ABS pipes better than the PVC pipes. And I think here in Oregon, by code, you're supposed to use the ABS pipes if you're doing plumbing or a sewer work. So really what you can get here easily is the ABS. So that's what I ended up using. Now on the intake, there's a gentle feeder setup, I guess you'd call it, where the water comes into the tank and then goes down a pipe and goes into a little foot at the bottom. And this helps the water go into the tank without disrupting the, the sediment in the tank. So that's what I'm putting together here. Now the little foot on the bottom seemed to fit the PVC pipe. And luckily I had a little connector that goes between the PVC and the ABS. So I used the PVC to go into the little foot. And then I used a, a black ABS pipe to go up to the inlet. So I need to measure the length as it has to be pretty close to correct. So the pipe will attach at the top and the foot will rest on the bottom. So I marked the length and took it out and cut it and put it in place. And I didn't glue this in place because I figured once, once the pipe's in the tank, I don't really care if it leaks or not. It just has to stay in place. So, so it should be okay. Then I could start making the connection between the intake on the tank and the downspout on the shop. And really this is just a series of connections, <laughs> elbows and pipes. 
I was cutting the pieces with my sawzall, then I would sand the, the burr off on a disc sander. And it was a little bit of dry fitting and connecting and kind of doing it all at once. I think the puzzle with this is getting your last connection to be the, the place that you want the last connection, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like you want the last connection where you've got a little bit of adjustability. And I can attach that to the shop. Now part of this system is a reservoir that the first water off the roof after it hasn't rained for a while goes into. So, so the first water after it's rained is the dirtiest because it's, it's the water that's washing off all the, the bird poop and the dead bugs off of the roof. There's a pipe that comes off of the downspout that fills with this dirtier water. Then once that's full, then the water starts flowing towards the tank. And I put a valve at the bottom so I can drain that between rain. And I may set it up where it sort of dribbles out slowly so it drains itself. But for now, this is what I'll do. And then the last thing to do is to hook up the overflow. So it's just a pipe from the overflow in the tank over to the old pipe that runs out into the yard. And this doesn't seem like the best connection because the pipe kind of cantilevers off to the side and I'm, I'm a little worried when it's got water in it and a little bit of weight that it's, it's not gonna hold itself very well. I couldn't see another way of doing it. I'm hoping that I never really have water running through this. I'm hoping that I can manage the water in the tank enough that it never completely fills up. But you don't want to make those your, your famous last words and then it fills up and you have a big problem with water going all over the place. So, so I do want to have this set up. So that's what the system looks like. And there's a few more little things I want to do. I want to attach the reservoir pipe to the shop and maybe add a hose bib at the bottom so I can attach a hose to that. Now the way the system works is the rain starts to come off the shop and it fills the first rain reservoir and once that's full, then the water starts to flow into the rain cistern and it flows down the pipe and into the, the soft foot at the bottom. And the tank fills up. And when the tank fills to the top, then the water can go out through the overflow, which then connects to the old pipe that I have that goes out to the yard. The next day, I got up, and it was raining. <laughs> so I got to go out and actually see the system working. And it was going into the tank. And it's starting to fill up, yay. And so far, it's working. Thanks for watching.